Do you struggle with leprosy? Do you find yourself having a hard time with lifelong disability? Potential antibiotic resistance? An ineffective BCG vaccine? The wide range of symptoms associated with leprosy. And no animal model to use in the lab to be able to see how leprosy really impacts humans. Well, you're not alone. Leprosy impacts close to 200,000 new people every year. And that's something that we want to change. There's got to be a better way. Our top scientists are proposing that in order to truly and effectively defeat leprosy, to instead of attempting to vaccinate, vaccinate humans, we are going to vaccinate armadillos. Why armadillos, you ask? Well, armadillos are the natural reservoir for leprosy. And we believe that it is these armadillos and their natural reservoir that is causing leprosy and new cases to come about each year despite antibiotic treatments. So, our scientists have thought, well, Herd immunity is pretty important. Herd immunity is when you vaccinate basically everybody you can and it protects the people who you can't vaccinate. Currently, since we do not have the ability to vaccinate humans, we are going to vaccinate the armadillos. And since both humans and armadillos can get leprosy, we are a part of the same herd. And until humans can be vaccinated for leprosy, Vaccinating the armadillos will be the closest to herd immunity that we can get. Critics will say, how do you plan to vaccinate armadillos and to cure leprosy? Well, we have a three-step foolproof plan for you. Here are our methods. First, you can see we have the zoonotic transmission of leprosy. It starts in our sad humans, and then it gets to our sad armadillos. And then after we treat our sad humans, unfortunately, the leprosy goes back to them. In order to cure leprosy, we have to prevent leprosy from getting from armadillos to humans and from humans to armadillos, which will ch turn that frown upside down. In order to do this, we have three simple steps. First, get armadillos. Second, test trial vaccines ID83 and ID93 on these armadillos. Three, vaccinate wild armadillos. Why are we using vaccines ID83 and ID93, you may ask? Well, we are using these vaccines for a number of reasons. First of all, these vaccines are what you call adjuvant recombinant protein vaccines. Adjuvanted meaning that they have something called an adjuvant, specifically G-L-A-S-E, added to the recombinant protein that increases the immune response, which is important. And they are protein, a protein fusion from mycobacterium tuberculosis. These two vaccines have been shown to do a number of things, including promoting a Th1-like response when stimulated with M. leprae antigen. This is important because the Th1 response is the response that is more likely to successfully clear an M. leprae infection and it leads to 
decreased and milder symptoms in leprosy manifestation. Also, these vaccines have been shown to reduce local leprosy-induced inflammation, which is great. Less inflammation is good in most cases. And they've been shown to decrease the M. leprae bacterial burden. But I thought we were using leprosy. Why are we using mycobacterium tuberculosis proteins? So why do we use tuberculosis vaccines for leprosy? Well, tuberculosis kills more people every year than leprosy does. However, mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium leprae have very similar antigenic makeup. That means that a vaccine for tuberculosis will very likely also provide protection for leprosy. And that is why we can use a tuberculosis vaccine for leprosy. To further illustrate our game plan, we want to vaccinate armadillos for leprosy. That may seem like a roundabout way to do it, but clinical trials in humans take years to complete. And while there are some vaccines currently on the way, it could still be years. And as I mentioned earlier, 200,000 new people get leprosy each year. So we don't wanna wait for this. We wanna attack the problem head on. Also, as I mentioned earlier, humans and armadillos are of the same herd, technically kind of, when it comes to leprosy. So we want to create herd immunity in armadillo populations. Currently, this is what we are facing right now. We have the natural reservoir of armadillos with M. leprae that continually reinfect each other and then infect healthy armadillos also with M. leprae. And then we also have healthy humans that come into contact with infected armadillos and these healthy humans then get M. leprae and become unhappy humans with leprosy that then can infect healthy armadillos, leading to, unfortunately, the continuation of this disease. What we wanna do is prevent all of this. So, how we overall plan schematically to reduce this zoonotic and interspecies transmission is to vaccinate armadillos. That way, when these vaccinated armadillos with this nice pink protection around them come into contact with non-vaccinated infected armadillos, they do not become infected. This should hopefully decrease the natural reservoir, also create a healthier and happier armadillo population where armadillos will have protection against leprosy and then the humans that come into contact with these armadillos will not end up getting leprosy. All right, so to talk a little bit about our anticipated results in the lab when we do this experiment, I've illustrated it on the board for you guys. So these are what I expect to happen when we immunize various types of armadillos with our vaccines. All right, so first off, we have our uninfected, non-immunized armadillo. When we look at immune response, it's either going to be the Th1 or the Th2, since it's not immunized at all. That, basically, these categories all depends on this. For number of lesions, if it's Th1, likely there will be fewer lesions. There will, with Th1, there will also be less leprosy-induced inflammation and a lower bacterial index. However, if the response is more Th2, we will have more lesions, more inflammation, and a higher bacterial index. And since this is a non-immunized armadillo, it will have a high susceptibility to M. leprae infection. Next up, we have our immunized non-infected armadillo. Because of the immunization, we expect it to have a Th1 response, which is what the immunization is for. It should have zero lesions as it should not develop leprosy. It should have low to no inflammation. The bacterial index should be low and then hopefully nothing. And then it will have a low to zero susceptibility to M. leprae infection. Next up, we have our infected non-immunized armadillo. That armadillo has leprosy. It will have a likely Th2 response a more humoral response resulting in a high number of lesions, many lesions, uh, a lot of inflammation from leprosy, a high bacterial index, and a very high susceptibility to infection. The wild card, however, is what happens when we immunize an armadillo that already has leprosy. I'm really curious about this one, guys. So what we hope is that when we stimulate it with leprosy antigens, due to the immunization, it will have an increased Th1 response who knows? 
It should have a decreased number of lesions. Hopefully the immunization in general just reduces the lesions. It should have less inflammation because of the immunization. The bacterial index should also be lowered and we expect there to be a lower susceptibility. Even though it already has leprosy, we expect it to be somewhat more immune. All right, guys, so to get a little serious now, let's talk about why all of this is so important. Honestly, first of all, we all know at this point, leprosy sucks. And my proposal by vaccinating armadillos has kind of like a really early onset thought because we wanna vaccinate armadillos to help people out now, but also way in the future, by vaccinating armadillos, we can potentially end up vaccinating humans too and maybe almost completely eradicating leprosy, what we want. So it doesn't have to do with human immunology as much as just creating that herd immunity for humans. All right, guys, I just wanna thank you. Thank you for coming out here today. Thank you for dealing with me dumping water all over my kitchen. And thank you for caring. But wait, there's more. Who wants to see some bloopers? guys and finally let's talk about why leprosy is so important contact <laughs> the real the real reason that we care it's the armadillos millions of armadillos thousands hundreds all the armadillos for all we know suffer each year from leprosy and we probably gave it to them. And that's, and it's hard that's just, that's really tough, guys. Like, we, we owe it to these armadillos to vaccinate them. It's not their fault. It's probably our fault. Reduce the suffering, guys. Reduce the suffering. Save an armadillo today.